Cynthia Tidler, a University of Wisconsin-Madison Master of Fine Arts graduate from 2015, was a student in my book arts classes. Cindy had written a creation story for her folklore class and wanted to create a unique book. As she searched for an appropriate book structure, she learned about the dragon scale binding. While she was not able to find many examples to use for reference, the book structure was very appealing to her. The structure allows the viewer to turn the pages and then the book can be rolled into a scroll. Her book combined a panoramic drawing with the text that she had written. To make the book, Cindy printed the text pages and then folded all of the sheets into folios. She then printed a complete reproduction of her drawing using a large format inkjet printer. Finally, she cut the reproduction into narrow strips and glued each strip to the far edge of each folio. I will demonstrate how she constructed the book in this video. I just wanted to go over the mechanics. The mechanics are such that each individual folio is attached to a hinge and it allows it, it, allows it to turn. Um, in the book that Cynthia made, she has over 50 of these panels. Each folio is made out made out of a sheet that's 12 inches long by 6 inches tall. That's just in, in, in this project here. Each of the folios will be hinged to this back sheet with um, a folded sheet. And in Cindy's case, she had 50 of these, uh, so she needed to make a minimum of 50 of these. So I'm going to show you one way that I might use if I want to make a lot of them. If you just need to make eight or, you know, ten, you might prefer to make them another way. But my goal is to make them all the same length, the same length as this base sheet. In my case, I want them to be an inch and a half, and I want them to be folded as evenly in, the, in, in half as possible. As I may have already said, the, the cascade and, and, and separation of each of these four edges is a determined by this hinge. So this is a half inch. Each one of these uh, protrudes out or sticks out a half inch. So let's get started on making these um, hinges. Depending on your project will determine how many of these little hinges you're going to need. The size from the top to bottom is going to be equal to the sheet that I'm going to attach them to is I'm going to need many of these especially if I'm going to make multiple books and my preference will be to um, make these uh, before I start to glue down the panels. I don't want to glue down a panel then make one of these and glue down a panel. I, I want to have plenty of these. This is um, a little scoring board. I'm not sure what they're called. It has, it has ridges. It's made out of plastic. It has, you know, these ridges. I've cut this piece of paper to be uh, divide, divisible by three quarters of an inch, so it goes to ten and a half. So, you know, three quarters to one and a half to three to four and a half to six, um, seven and a half, nine, and then ten and a half, and then. So I'm just going to use this triangle. This is a this paper is a little bit thicker. Um, the tool that they sent works very well. Uh, I find that when I use thick cardstock, um, the, the whatever tool that I use, this is a, a smaller folding bone that's a little bit thinner than that, but whatever tool I use, sometimes if the paper is thick, my um, the uh, tool slides out of the ridge. So I'm going to use this triangle just to help me. And it doesn't matter if I start on this side or here, but from ten and a half, three quarters will be uh, nine and three quarters. I'll put the tool in there first, and then I'll align this, this triangle. And then as I come down, I'll put some force on it, but I'm, I'm, my goal is to use this, this edge to guide my, my, folding, my folding bone.
I hope you can see the score marks. They're every three quarters of an inch. So I'll get this off camera. And then what I'll do next is just simply use those ridges or score marks to fold this. I'll use a knife that's not real sharp. This is more on the dull side than it is sharp. But I'll now start cutting at every one of these peaks. Now you could do this with a paper cutter. Um, there's a number of ways to do it. I would just want to make sure that my hinge is an inch and a half. And when it folds, it's it's uniform. It does have a little bit of a of a of a torn edge, um, and I'll have to see if the, if that's visible. I may have to burnish that down. Um, but I think it it's easier for me to fold and tear this, maybe um, a little sharper knife. But if I was to to do that and then have to measure and score it, it, it might take a little longer than I, than I want to, to invest because I'm going to make a lot of these. So starting with a sheet of paper that was ten and a half inches, I end up with seven different little hinges. And so now let's make the folios. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sheets of, of white cover stock. Um, it's twelve by nine inches. I get four sheets. I get you know four pieces out of each sheet that's 19 by 25 and then I trim it down to um, 6 by 9. It's a thicker cover stock from French paper so I will simply fold each one and then that's going to make a folio that is 6 inches by 9 6 Again, the grain runs short, so the, the fold is pretty smooth. So I have nine folios. Folds on this side, the edge on this side. If I want them to lay a little bit flatter, I could position them under weight and then let them rest off camera. So as you get started, you know, I've got a, for this, you know, blank, blank book demonstration, I have a sheet that's nine inches from head to foot, and then the length of it is a total of 25 inches, and that's equal to the the sheet of paper that I bought it was 25 by 19 and you know cutting it in half is nine nine and a half and then I just trimmed I trimmed it so that it was even uh, an even nine and that fits to the sheet this folio which is a, you know a folio folded is six by nine made out of a sheet of paper that is made out of a sheet of paper that is 12 by nine One option, and the option that um, Cynthia made was that you could, um, w you know, make a you could make a scroll with the 
with the with the sheets inside it which would mean the design you could you could perhaps start the uh, placement of these panels anywhere you want <clears throat> there's a limited number that you could fit on a piece that's 25 inches long however you could add another piece and add or you could look for a sheet of paper that was that was longer but for this demonstration I'm just gonna I'm gonna start at what I would consider to be the, I'm gonna start what I consider to be the end of the book and then apply the the panels or folios going to the left which would be where the where the front of the book is um, so I'm gonna put the first one where as it lays down it covers it covers the back board um, so this being the first folio I'm going to place it so that it rests right here the first one that you apply can be the trickiest because it, it sets up the rest of them meaning that it's going to be built from the location where this one sits um, I have since I was able to get eight folios out of two sheets of paper I already have the folios I already have all the folios cut and folded one two three four five six seven eight and in the previous I've cut eight of these hinges I'm going to use some PVA a small brush that's flat um, so the the first one is a little bit trickier so remember that I'm gonna glue I'm gonna apply adhesive on this side of the hinge and it'll be pasted here so then this folio will will adhere to the other side of the hinge and I need to make sure that there's that nothing gets uh, pasted here because this is going to hinge so let's get started I I'm going to take and place the hinge inside my folio. I'll align that up on the top and check the bottom. I'm going to I'm going to put this align get a weight and I will check it I'll check this edge and this edge I'll put adhesive on here I'll lift this I'll lift this up Put it underneath there and paste that down. Now this has a little a little rough spot there. I'll trim that off so it doesn't create an excess and this has a little bit of a rough spot, but as I complete the book this side of the folio is going to fold over so it'll hide whatever is visible so let's get some waste paper and remember it's this side that goes down so I'll just take 
I'm only putting this on top of here so that the camera can catch it. But I'm just going to get a little bit of adhesive. I'll get this out of the way. I'll keep that off camera, but you can see. You can see I have some on the on the flat surface of the brush. I'll lift this up. I'll fold this crease in. The one advantage of PVA is that there's a little bit of, of opportunity to move this. And the only thing that's being pasted down right now is this hinge. This paper is, is not adhered to it. So now that this, again, the white paper is, has not been adhered to the hinge, I'm going to first take adhesive and very carefully I'll make sure this paper doesn't move. And I'll bring this over. And I will apply adhesive on this side. And then this will move freely. Now the part that's holding the book together is the adhesive on the underside of this hinge and what we've just put underneath here that's attached to this this sheet, the inside of this sheet. I suggest putting adhesive You know all along here but really at this point it's more likely just to keep the viewer from opening it and you may find that using a traditional Japanese printmaking paper might be a little thinner um, you may find that the adhesive could seep through is PVA the best all-around thing uh, adhesive to use? You know, you've seen other videos of mine. What the last one where I was using dry mount tissue? That could be an option, and I suspect um, a double-sided archival tape would work as well. I have confidence in this archival uh, PVA that it will last uh, a long time. So you can see this hinge. We did this one a little differently than we're going to do the rest of these. Because I'm going to position this down here and then I'll connect the folio to it. So I want to make sure this is the size this is the side that gets adhesive. Now I'm, I'm going to, the beauty in using the same color is that if it's not perfectly aligned you don't see it. But for the camera work 
it makes it a little bit harder to see but I'm 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 butting up this hinge right to the edge of that folio there <clears throat> I'll bring this over and let it rest and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put adhesive on this side and then bring this over to it. I'll put some clean out of the way. I'll get this off of here. Bring that. And now you can see the spacing there is equal to that hinge. I'll put some wait let it sit for a while and we'll add the next one in just a moment the second folio or panel has been underweight for a few minutes and now you begin to see how all we have to do is to continue add these hinges this needs to be pasted down which we can do that now or we can do that later I'm just going to take a little bit of an adhesive <clears throat> and let's put a small amount of weight on that. So we simply need to repeat this process. that down <clears throat> and we'll add another folio. So I remind myself this is the area where I apply adhesive. There's adhesive. Take another folio. So that's going to glue here so the adhesive goes on this side. I do not want to get any adhesive on the other side of the score and then bring this down and so you now can see that when I bring this down we now have three of the panels in place by using the same size hinge the spacing of each panel is, is uniform Now while that entirety dries, that goes this way, so I put adhesive on here. All right. <clears throat> see this out of the way, you can see that that's been put down 
Take another folio. I'll put adhesive here. So you, so at this point, <clears throat> it's just a matter of step and repeat. And by having the hinges already made and the folios already made, it's just a matter of grabbing the next piece. I'll get this off so that I can take this edge, align it in the crease. Now, of course, we have the luxury in that we're making a book out of blank sheets. If these were already printed and such, you'd have the added step to make sure that your sequence or that the sequence is correct. Okay. I'll just put this here to keep that. Now we have four. this out of the way. Put this here. It does hide it from that camera, but it gives it some weight. <clears throat> Let's see if I can just put that. Now I need adhesive on this side. Luckily, that's going to be covered by this, and then that will be covered by the next hinge. Seldom does it work that way, but luckily it did this time. One, two, three, four, five. This is a little bit rougher side, so this will go down here. I'll put adhesive on that side. One, two, three, four, five, six. I feel like I'm getting the hang of it. Let's see if I can put adhesive without using a way sheet, which is not a good idea.
that's the eighth one close it cover it weight it down and we'll let that sit for a while so when you're finished you'll have one folio for every page that you want in your book the number of pages is up to you I'm using a blank book <clears throat> and in the one that Cynthia did she has text on this side and then in this three quarters of an inch section she has cut and placed part of the drawing you could pre-draw or print and then assemble it or as she did she did it in stages where she printed the text and then had you know options for text here and then positioned a drawing uh, on on this on this edge this four edge now how long this is um, is up to you and remember that in you know in hers she's made a coil I don't know that I can show this on camera but I'll show hers and she's made a coil and obviously if you want it to be if you want it to be a coil you're going to need more than eight panels uh, but that's that's where you in your own creativity and the concept of and the concept of your book will give you guidance all right so let me know if you have any questions and i hope this uh, binding has given you ideas for future projects